Hey there, thanks for tuning in to Duckbricks. I'm Chris, and today we have a bit of an informational slash vlog video. So let me explain. I started off making this video to be purely informational, talking about how I personally would pack Lego sets, what's the best way to pack them, and transport them. But then so many crazy things happened over the course of the trip that I honestly had to kind of convert this video to just a trip recapping. So the TLDR is that I currently have an apartment where I study for college. It's my senior year in college over in the East Coast. I needed to go back home for spring break really quickly, so I wanted to bring back as much Lego as I could. So I took home two large suitcases, one carry-on suitcase, and a massive bag of Lego, literally one of the Lego bags that was doubled up, filled with other Lego sets. That was a mistake, and you're going to find out why. But essentially, over the course of all this, I had a pretty insane time bringing it over. There were many instances over the trip where I thought I would lose everything. Kind of a wild ride. So many things went wrong. Actually, literally everything that could have gone wrong did. So I hope you enjoy the ride. If you want to just jump to the more funny and interesting stuff, I've linked it in the description below. The way that the video is essentially structured is that the first half or so is dedicated to me explaining how I managed to pack everything up. It's really just me talking the viewers through exactly how I would recommend packing things and how I did pack things. And then everything kind of goes crazy when I actually have to transport the items. So if you just want to see the funny parts, you can go to that. But as of right now, I hope you enjoy the whole video and thanks for tuning in. Let's just jump right into things and you're going to hear an intro the second time because I filmed it twice, first of all in my apartment. So let's go. I have a very difficult task ahead, and hopefully a pretty interesting video for you as well. So you see on this table right here, as well as this shelf here, is pretty much every single LEGO purchase I've made in the past two months. At the time of recording this video, it is basically around March 1st, and everything here is everything from January 1st all the way until now. Sure, there are a couple of outliers like the UCS AT-AT, which has been at this place since November, as well as the Titanic, but for the most part, Everything here is just what I've bought in the last two months. And so, it is time for me to go back home, take these back to my main LEGO collection, and actually be able to replenish the shelves for all my future LEGO purchases, because right now, this apartment that I'm in is basically just for the time while I'm at college. So, of course, I'm at college, I'm going to be building and buying more LEGO, and I need some more room. So, all of it, or as much as possible, has got to go. And that's where this video comes in, because I'll be showcasing how exactly I pack and transport all of my Lego cross-country. I'm on the East Coast right now, I'll be bringing it back to my home on the West Coast, and seeing which ones actually survive the trip. So to do so, I've brought over two silver suitcases, we'll be packing them as full as we can, full of Lego, and seeing exactly what we can fit. But first, everything, and I mean everything, needs to come off of these shelves. And these are really tightly packed, so let's take a closer look at them right now and then take everything down. So I'm going to decide right now the UCS ATAT -AT will not be brought over this trip, but everything else is fair game, so boy do I have a lot of work to do. We've got a lot of custom Bionicle mocks here, specifically the ones made by Wombat Combat Pictures, as well as some random G2 sets I was able to collect secondhand just because you can never have too much Bionicle. I also have this massive Technic bucket wheel excavator here. One of the Bionicles is even hanging off of the side of it because I simply do not have room and I have to be very careful about that $2,000 inside tour mask. In the back there is the Monkey Kid spaceship from January 1st, 2022, and that's just what's on top. We still have all the shelves to go. So taking a look at this shelf here, you can see some of the Ninjago mechs. I've got the collectible minifigure series from the first half of this year, so that is a good series to get, but definitely going to have to be packed completely separately to keep it apart. We have the Garganto Showdown set for the Doctor Strange Movie 2, as well as the Mr. Gold minifigure and Chrome C-3PO. Those are gonna have to go separately, because I am very, very concerned about losing them or scuffing them up. Moving onwards from that, which also had that massive Chinese New Year ice skating rink, we have the LEGO Minecraft display here, which features most of the sets. All the way in the back, it's hard to see, but there's only one more Minecraft set that isn't there. You've got the Ninja Training Center, but in the back of the shelf here, there is the LEGO Ideas Sonic set. Yeah, that one's all the way in the back, just kind of barely hidden away there. You can just see the particularly bad Dr. Eggman build in the back, as well as just some of the more square LEGO items, like some of the Harry Potter builds, as well as the Ideas Big Bang Theory set, plus some of the different minifigures I've accumulated on different trips around the world that had custom LEGO stores that printed minifigure torsos. 
On the back here, we have some more of the Lunar New Year sets. We have the special free gift of Luke's lightsaber, some of the Ninjago and Monkey Kid cars, and just a whole lot of other stuff, including the Bricklink AFL designer program sets from 2019. This shelf here features most of the stuff I actually did not get just this past few months. These sets I got around Black Friday, they just kind of happened to stay on this one shelf. But everything else is again, mostly just collected in the past few months here. With these LEGO Friends sets, we've got some train sets from 2018 actually, that still actually are around to this day at shop at lego.com. And down here we have some vintage sets like the Poolside Paradise. You have some of these sets I actually got in a different used store adventure. Be sure to stay tuned to Duckbricks to check out more used store adventure videos coming soon. And even more of the AFL Designer Program sets with the massive Monkey Kid City of Lanterns here as well, which features a massive city as well as pretty much every single Monkey Kid set from this wave. Plus Santa Garmadon and his sleigh from the employee exclusive Ninjago gift set. Down here, we have finally, we've reached the bottom of just one of these columns here. You got the Maersk train, but also a whole lot of other stuff back there. This is kind of just a place where I put random different bits and pieces of Lego. Obviously, as you can see, this is just my college apartment, so I'm operating on very, very limited space. I really just kind of had to cram things all together. And moving on to this shelf here, we have even more random finds of older city sets from used LEGO stores. We have the LEGO Employee Gift Ninjago Temple of Celebrations all the way in the back there. You can barely even see it, so yeah, I'm really, really running tight on space here. So all of this pretty much absolutely has to go. There's even a vintage fire station buried under there, and you can really only see the base plate. Here's one of the older vintage gas stations, which is covered with stuff. We have a mini clone trooper army going on here, a custom Sauron build, a lot of different mechs, including the canceled Overwatch 2 Titan mech, as well as the temple from the Ninjago 2022 first half of the year wave, and an older Kingdom's Jow set as well. Going on upwards, we have a LEGO submarine from the LEGO idea sets. This was one of the very first idea sets, actually a really rare set right there, plus a few other random stuff. We have the Home Alone house dominating this shelf right here, plus a lot of miscellaneous things like the older LEGO ISS, as well as some brick heads kind of scattered around here. You can see some more brick heads down here as well. And then moving upwards, we have this shelf dedicated to animals, specifically the Ninjago dragons and Ninjago minifigures, plus the creator expert Majestic Tiger, and a couple of random city sets and monkey kid sets thrown around as well. So yeah, that's everything I have to bring home on this pair of shelves here, but that's not all, because as you can see here, I still have a whole table of other stuff to bring home, including the massive Lego Titanic, the massive Big Ben, the massive Tower Bridge, man am I saying massive quite a lot, and every single Lego City road plate set. If you do want to check out what all those sets look like together, I did just put out a video showcasing every single road plate set, so that is pretty cool if you do want to see that. But yeah, the Titanic is probably one of the ones I'm worried about how to even bring home the most. I don't really know how that's going to happen. I guess we'll figure it out over the course of this video. So you can see just a ton of stuff here, just so many large items. I tried to confine most of the larger Lego items here, so these will be kind of a pain to pack and hopefully they'll stay together as much as possible. And yeah, I'm not even going to touch any of these wall-mounted vehicles, except for the Batmobile Tumbler because I do want to bring that home and display that next to the older Tumbler. Everything else here from LEGO Technic and the Creator Expert cars, yeah, that's all going to stay here. That's a problem for future Chris to deal with because I have so much to pack already. And also, once I take these down, there's going to be really ugly holes in the walls. So because I'm holding them up with screws, I'm just going to leave them there. We're also not even counting the massive LEGO mosaics and wall art I have here from LEGO Bionicle, as well as a classic space portrait. So all in all, a ton of LEGO stuff. Let's now take everything down from the shelves. Here's a quick and kind of satisfying time lapse where you can see me very systematically just taking down every single set over the course of the day. You can see day slowly turn into night over the amount of time it took me to just remove every single set until finally, here we have all of the different sets finally taken down from the shelves. So those shelves are empty except for the UCS ATAT there, and obviously none of the stuff has been taken down from here yet, and I haven't even touched the table, but I'd say pretty good progress. I'm pretty happy with this, and now it's time for the hard part. How on earth am I going to pack all of this? So a few quick things about how I'm going to structure this. I would tend to kind of try to bag up smaller items in Ziplocs first. I use Saran Wrap, which is really, really useful for packing larger items, especially if they don't fit in Ziplocs. Saran Wrap is actually really good for keeping fragile stuff like vehicles and buildings together. So let's just jump right into the packing. 
All right, so here we are. Pretty much everything that was on that shelf right there has been taken fully down now. I do not know if I'll be able to fit every single item into my two suitcases. This one in particular, I'm not sure. Maybe I'll have to leave this here and figure out how to take it some other time. But pretty much everything else is fair game. Now, the way I kind of want to structure this video is to run down kind of how I'm going to plan to take apart certain objects, just in case maybe for those of you who want to pack your own Lego and transport them, hopefully it might be helpful to see how I chose to pack them. And at the end of the video, I'm going to record myself after I'm actually back home to see exactly how many of these survived. So. We're gonna start off, I'm gonna try to group these into different categories. So we'll start off with some mechs because typically the large mech-like builds are generally the ones that are the easiest to pack. You just kind of have to pop off the limbs, take off anything that could fall off, and really just try to pack them individually to make sure that they actually transport okay. From there, I'll go on to some dragons and creatures, like from Ninjago, talk about how to pack some bionicles, which honestly are really easy. You could really just throw most of them into a Ziploc and they'll be good to go. And then we'll get to the hardest part, which is specific buildings, as well as just different vehicles and kind of random stuff here and there that I'll see how, what I can do to pack them. Usually what I have to do at the end of all my travels is open up my suitcases and spend the next few weeks, if not months, literally just sitting there, piecing them all together, rebuilding each partially disassembled and smashed together set. Of course, it depends on how rough the airline agents are at actually handling your suitcases. Sometimes I have opened up my luggages and found pretty much everything the way I left it, which is if they're really careful with your luggage, if they really try to handle it without banging it around, then you could get really lucky. Other times you simply just get really unlucky. I always sigh when I see my luggage has been beat up because that means the contents are really jumbled as well and there's going to be a lot of rebuilding to do. To be honest, I still have not managed to even rebuild some of the stuff from previous years of my LEGO collecting. Even all the way back until like June or August of last year, I still have a bit of stuff I need to fix that I built here, brought back home, and just simply did not get a chance to fix it because of how broken they were. So, so I hope that the pile will not become too, too big, and we'll see just how we're going to be able to transport all this stuff home. So as I said, let's kick things off by taking a look at how I pack up mechs. And the way I pack up each individual item is getting some large and small Ziplocs and basically just fitting in what I can into the process until we're good to go. So let's go. All right, we've got our Ziplocs ready. Let's get packing. Man, I'm not looking forward to packing all of this, but it must be done. So here we are. So I'm going to start off with one of the easy ones. This is the Ninja Ultra Combo Mech from 2022. This is from the Ninjago Core lineup. It features a really cool, actually, combination mech for all four of the original Ninja. It splits up into different vehicles, and that makes it extra easy to pack. So I'm actually going to just separate all these different vehicles off right now, start my job easier for me, because then I can just take all of these little bits and pieces off and pack them in their own Ziplocs, which will also ensure that they manage to stay together and intact. So that's very nice. So I'm gonna get each of these pieces off. I don't really have to care too, too much about actually transforming them into their individual vehicles, because again, it's all going to be packed away anyway. So let's just get these off here and we'll be good to go. So what I'm gonna do is I will actually combine these two Zane vehicles here because I think these actually do deserve to be put together just for stability purposes. And I'm just gonna grab a Ziploc and this is gonna be really easy. Maybe I'll take off these clip pieces here because I feel like they could destabilize the rest of the build. But as it is, this is pretty solid. So first one was pretty easy. Hopefully it will stay more or less intact during translit. We'll have to see exactly how successful I was, but let's wrap this up here and we will move on. So this is mostly just a pretty tedious process of just going through and just backing up every single thing. Man, this is a, a very tedious thing to do, but it's definitely something that needs to be done if you actually want to cut down on rebuilding time. One of my least favorite things to do with LEGO is actually rebuilding sets that I've built before. I love building LEGO sets. I don't love rebuilding these same sets, especially having to figure out which chunks came from what and whatnot, because that's no fun, because I feel like, one, I've already done the full building experience. I know how everything goes together already, and there really isn't any point in wasting my time just building it again. So I am going to try to really pack these as nicely as possible. Cole's vehicle, I do try to separate joints because sometimes joints do tend to crack, especially in transit. If the carriers are very, very rough with the Lego, they do tend to crack. So I'm going to be 
extra careful with the joints there, making sure everything is fully sealed up. We don't want any parts kind of flying out or causing any ruckus here. So we've got these set aside. Let's take out our next bag for Jay's vehicle here. We've got a bit of a flyer for Jay. Another thing you have to be careful for when packing Lego is that bar elements will snap apart. So I'm going to remove the bars here. And I'm actually gonna remove these bars as well because I really do not want my Lego to get permanently damaged. This feels like it's okay to put in. So we're just gonna drop all of these pieces in, hope for the best and seal this guy up. You may notice that this is taking up a ton of Ziplocs. And yeah, that's kind of the price you have to pay. You're gonna be burning through a lot of Ziplocs when you do this. Hopefully if they don't get damaged too, too much, and you could maybe have some Ziplocs in reserve if you ever need to pack Lego again. But usually what I end up doing is just having to throw out all the Ziplocs, which does feel like a bit of a waste, but honestly, I don't really know how else I would do it. So here we have, this one's gonna be super, super easy. So this is just Kai's little mech here. I'm gonna take the feet off. We're gonna separate the pan pieces right here, close this all up. And yeah, this is pretty good to go. So. Again, I'm just going to take this Ziploc, looks like it will fit it, so take this Ziploc here. I'm probably going to start off with all the mechs just because they're the easiest ones to transport. Let's actually separate the legs. I don't know how I feel about the, the legs being on. I just really don't want anything to break. So I'm going to separate the legs out. Hopefully the Ziploc will be big enough to fit everything. This is a pretty bulky chest piece too, so that the chest piece is adding a good amount of bulk to the Ziploc. I am trying to fairly tightly pack each of these to really make sure that everything does stay together well. Again, the sword is probably going to get bent, so I'm going to try to minimize that as much as possible by removing it from the hilt there. And there you have it. This is a pretty compactly packed up Kai's mech from the Ultra Combo mech. So, there's the Ultra Combo mech, that was pretty easy. Let's move on to one of the more difficult mechs. This right here is the LEGO Overwatch 2 Titan. This is actually a canceled LEGO set. They were originally going to come out with it back in 2020, but then Overwatch 2 got delayed. And then eventually when they eventually decided to release it this year in 2022, there were a lot of allegations surrounding the Blizzard company, so they canceled it. But thankfully, a few copies made their way into the wild and I was able to purchase this one from eBay actually. So. Little backstory aside, let's just kind of separate each of the legs out here. Now, pieces are already coming off of these when I'm doing this. I'm not trying to be super, super careful. I'm just really trying to get this all done perfectly nicely. So we're just gonna remove upper arms here. Just take those off. Oh, come on. Okay, there we go. I really don't want those to be breaking. So that's how it's gonna be done. I'm gonna remove these side armor pieces from the arms because I feel like these are likely to break off, or at least they're liable to be breaking off here. Separate out all of our joints. And yeah, this is pretty simple. Once you have everything fully separated out, I just wanna be very careful when I pack this, it's to not break things. Ooh, this foot is definitely not gonna survive, but I will do my best to pad it and really try to make sure that this assembly kind of comes together all in one piece. And actually, what I'm going to do to make my life a lot easier, it'll be a little bit wasteful on the Ziplocs, but I will be actually separating this out into multiple Ziplocs just to make my life easier when I actually eventually rebuild it at the end. Having all the different pieces, like for the legs separated out, is really useful because then I can actually have these fully packed up. I know which pieces go to what, and I can very easily rebuild it just based on that. So we're gonna put the legs and feet in one bag, which honestly, this kind of takes up most of the bag. So pretty happy with how this all turned out. Kind of zip that guy back up. Ooh, it's a little tight, a little tight, but it's okay. So legs there, we're gonna get another one of those smaller bags for the rest of the stuff here. So I'm going to take the gun cannon arm, as well as the actual hand on here. This is actually a pretty cool build. Man, I really do like this build. Um, and we've got some extra pieces, again, removing any actual axles that could cause damage. So I'm just gonna take pieces like this off here and just try to pack this as compact as possible. So to basically minimize any breaking. I'm gonna speed up the footage now so we can just get this over with and done. Okay, so Overwatch 2 Titan is packed up. Let's now move on to some of our other stuff. There's some other mechs back there, but they're more smaller things. I guess the next biggest mech here is the Macaque mech from Monkey Kid. We're gonna take this part pretty much in the same way. So let's speed this up and get this done. So 
So in this bag, I have placed the torso, feet, head, tail, and accessory here. So we're gonna set that aside. And now we just have the arms and legs. So these will be easy. And that was very easy. Arms and legs right here. I am very confident, or fairly confident, this will survive most of the trip, but we'll see if I'm wrong. Let's now move on to some of the next stuff. So with the mechs all well and sorted and fully packed here, I think it's now time to turn our attention to some of the other stuff. I kind of want to address how I plan to pack some of the larger models like the Big Ben Creator Expert Tower here. Now this one is something I'm going to have to kind of figure out as I go along, but typically with big models like these, I find that... But typically with big models like these, I find that simple saran wrap, like plastic wrap like this, tends to go a long way in terms of being able to pack them up. We'll see how successful I'll be, but essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to separate this part of the tower out. So let's see if we can get that out here. I have a feeling that these columns are going to be breaking off, but that was pretty easy just to take off. And then I'm just going to try to wrap this as its own assembly, just completely all assembled together. We'll see how successful I actually am with this. The only problem is there's a large Technic rod sticking out here. Maybe if I just pull that all the way out, you know, set that aside for now. Then I just have this tower here, which I think will be a lot easier to pack after I fully wrap it. So let's just go ahead and do that. Okay, so what I'm going to try to do now is I'm twisting the top of the saran wrap to really kind of envelop the main tower piece here. I can already feel a few things creeping around and maybe potentially causing some breakages, but for the most part, the saran wrap surprisingly does a really good job at keeping things together. It might not seem like it's doing a ton, but this actually is going to keep this tower part, well hopefully, you're going to find out at the end of the video, pretty intact. So. What I have here now is the fully saran wrapped tower, and this can honestly just go into the suitcase by itself. I might want to put it inside one or two Ziplocs just to make sure it actually fits, but given that it's such a large item, I'm not even sure if it'll fit. So I'm going to set that aside for now. That leaves us with the rest of the building here. Now immediately I'm going to see is there a way that I can remove this assembly right here that kind of juts outwards. And then all of this might be having to be packed as its own assembly. We're going to have to figure out, but let's see, is there an easy way to just... Okay, well, that was a little easier than I thought it would be. Just simply removing this piece here. I can already see a few bits and pieces that are likely to be going to be falling off here. But let's just try to get this as disassembled as possible without having everything completely falling apart. So I'm just going to take a couple pieces off of here and make sure that this is all set to go. Okay, just like that. I think I dropped a piece down in there, so we're gonna tilt this upside down. Come on. yep, there we go, okay. So now that this is fully out, I am going to put this in its own bag. I think that this probably is either something that needs to be saran wrapped or I will just throw it in a Ziploc and hope for the best. So I'm gonna set this piece aside for now. And all of this stuff, I'm going to break off these spires here because I think those are likely to break off anyway. So I just want to make sure these do not get lost. So I'm just going to break off all the spiky bits here on the top of the towers. I'm also going to remove the tree here because I think this is also something that could potentially break. And as it is right now, this is pretty sturdy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this entire piece in saran wrap. So this whole section right here is going to get fully wrapped up put all of these stuff as well as this in its own Ziploc and we're gonna be good to go. Let's try that out right now. All right, so to be honest, this is not super optimal. It's kind of a cube-like shape. I'm gonna have to get really creative when I actually put this in the luggage itself to figure out where exactly I can fit it. But as it is right now, it's kind of holding up pretty okay. We're gonna just set this aside and hope for the best. Now it's time for the big boy. Let's figure out how to saran wrap this whole massive thing. Okay, I have a little feeling I'm going to regret this, but yeah, we have saran wrapped the whole London uh, Big Ben Tower set right here. This is not my best saran wrap job. We're going to figure out how sturdy this actually will hold up just throw it in a suitcase, but yeah, that's really the best I can do, so let's move on. 
Okay, so next up, one thing I actually want to do before we get too far into this is actually set aside a lot of the minifigures. Oftentimes, the minifigures can be thrown into different sets, and honestly, because I have a lot of wall frames showcasing minifigures at my house, I kind of want to prioritize bringing back a lot of these special minifigures I plan to put on display. So, before we get even further, I'm going to take aside all of the different minifig piles and try to set them in their own Ziplocs. Let's do that right now. Since I display all my minifigures at home on wall displays, setting aside pretty much all the minifigures I plan to display now is going to save me a ton of time in the future. Instead of having to unpack every single set and take each of the figures out, I can simply just open up the minifigure bags and go ahead and add them onto my displays. So I'm doing that right now. It's a long process, but we'll get there eventually. It looks like barely a dent has been made in the actual collection, but we have four very important bags here now. Here we have all of the random miscellaneous minifigures that are probably mostly licensed. So we've got the clone troopers and some other stuff like that from Star Wars and Marvel. Right here is the Ninjago specific bag. So we got all of the different Ninjago minifigures I've gotten throughout the past couple of months. Most of these are from the January 1st wave. But then you got a few of them like the Golden Ninja from the Temple of Celebrations, which was the employee exclusive gift set, which you can see right over there. So that said, I still need to pack away, but at least its minifigures are in here. Next up, we have all of the Monkey Kid minifigures. These were all pretty much every single figure that was featured in the 2022 first half of the year wave. A lot of different figures and some of the best figures LEGO's ever done. Finally, we have a bag full of the different Minecraft mobs and characters. I actually have a section of my wall display at home dedicated to showcasing all of the different Minecraft characters, skins, and mobs, so these will make a fine addition to that collection on the wall. Next up, though, while I was walking around, you may notice that some of the other models have been displaced, namely the dragons, so I think it's time to tackle some of the Ninjago dragons as we make our way through packing this haul. First off, we have Lloyd's Legendary Dragon here. This is one of the larger Ninjago dragons that they've done. Definitely the largest dragon that we have here, and let's try and figure out how to pack this up. So the wings will be very easy. I'm just gonna pop them off and pack them flat. So these wings will probably be packed in one of the more flat sections of the suitcase. I might even hand carry them because I really don't want the fabric to get ruined. So these are gonna be set aside. And then it's just a matter of basically just taking off each of the different pieces and essentially making sure that this dragon is fully kind of separated out in his different limbs and whatnot, so I can very nicely just pack them away. So let's take the front legs off here. I shall remove the back legs. The tail will be removed as well, and the head. So some more disassembly we're gonna have to do here. The head, I think I will remove the C-bound spike-like pieces here, especially because I'm just worried that they might crack the pieces that they're attached to. The tail, of course, this is gonna get removed because I can imagine this would get pretty bent up in there and the legs actually can't separate out. So these are gonna be just taken apart like so. Just super, super simple disassemblies here that I really just wanna make sure nothing is going to have any risk of breaking. I'm actually gonna separate this out at the joint here because this is kind of a liable piece to crack. And then lastly, the flag will be separated as well. So now we have kind of bits and pieces of dragon parts. Let me just grab our Ziplocs over here and start to put these all away. Notice how I am tending to use some of these smaller Ziplocs because with the larger ones that does leave a lot of wiggle room for them to be potentially damaged. At least with the smaller ones I know exactly what I am doing and then I can just put each limb packed very very tightly together with the others so at least if parts break off I know exactly what set they're supposed to go to. So really it's kind of just a matter of let me see what this looks like laying flat and trying to Tessellate them into different configurations here. Nothing too, too crazy going on. I just want to make sure that no parts get damaged during the packing. So let's figure this out right now. All right, so here we have dragon head and limbs and dragon body just kind of packed away in a Ziploc. So we're going to set these aside in our done pile there. And then the wings, again, I'm just going to pack loose. So these will probably not break apart if I just pack them flat. So I'm going to set these aside as well. And we can move on to some of the other dragons. So back here I'm seeing we do have some dragons on the back, specifically from Ninjago, but mostly some of these smaller ones from the recent core lineups. We have this dragon here for Kai, one for Jay. I'm trying to see, are there any other dragons? I guess I'll grab the Majestic Tiger as well. Obviously it's not a dragon, but it is some kind of an animal that I do want to pack away like so. And let's see, anything else that we want to do kind of in this section? 
I guess the Gargantos from the Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness set should come as well. Let me just grab this guy right here and pack him up. Right here we have all sorts of different animals that need to be packed up fully nicely. So let's take Kai's Dragon. Easy one here. Pop the wings off. We're going to pop the head off. Pop off the limbs. This one's going to be super, super simple. Let me just try to get this done quickly because we have a lot of stuff to go through. So get the limbs off and the tail. And we're gonna do the same for Jay's Dragon here. Now, the cool thing about the core sets is that they actually can be separated out even more than what their current iteration is. They are specifically built to be disassembled and built up. So what I'm going to do is, I mean, this body section is probably just fine, but if there's anything I need to remove from these body sections, I can just do so very easily. The Majestic Tiger will be, I guess, a little bit more difficult, but again, this one just seems like I can kind of separate out each of the different body sections. And again, I do not want the limb pieces to be damaged. So this is just a quick disassembly of the way the limbs come together here. Let's just get, them on, get that off. Oops, get this piece off here. And then the head, which probably will break a lot in transit. I don't imagine this one staying together too, too well, but this is gonna come off as well. And yeah, there we go. Lastly, we have the Gargantos creature from the Doctor Strange set. So let's just remove the tentacles, anything that could be breaking off here. I really just wanna get all this off and we're gonna be good to go. Let's bag them up and then this will be all done. I'm breaking out the slightly bigger Ziploc for the Majestic Tiger here. All right, so on to Tuakatwa, we have all four animal bags all sealed away and it's time to move on to the rest of the builds. Before we get too far into this, one set that I definitely wanted to bring home this trip is the massive Titanic. So I'm gonna get it out of the way right now so I can know how much space I have left to budget for all these other sets. Let's figure out how to disassemble this bad boy. So I'm gonna set our tower bridge aside for now and let's bring the Titanic all the way up to the forefront here. Now, thankfully the Lego designers have done a lot of the work for me because the Titanic is specifically designed to be split into three different sections. All I probably will need to do is take each of these smokestacks off, take the masts off, and I hope that it'll be pretty sturdy to ship. I don't necessarily know how good it will be, but this one, I may actually end up hand carrying at least maybe some sections of it because this was a pretty repetitive build. It was a very fun build, but I'm not looking forward to building it again. This is not something I want to arrive in my luggage completely smashed, so, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna be very careful with how we pack this up and pray that it will not be destroyed by the time it gets there. So first of all, let's see. I think the string connecting all different sections just has to be simply disconnected here. Let me just see if I can remove the string piece here and disconnect this. This one can stay intact as it is. And what I want to do now is actually be removing each of these string elements. So what I'll do is just get that string out of the way, disconnect this piece right here so I can remove each of the mast sections. So this large mast is gonna get set aside and I'm gonna do the same for this one. So this is gonna be set aside and get this off. Come on, yep, get rid of that piece there. And then we just have a lot of the extra strings. I am going to preemptively remove these string pieces right now because I just kind of suspect that they might get damaged. This one's pretty embedded in, so I can't really remove this one, but I can get rid of this. Let's see, is there anything I can do? No, this one's pretty tight too. So I'm gonna try to take off as much as I can here in terms of the strings. So setting all those aside, next up, what we're gonna need to do is to actually remove the yellow masks. So, First thing I want to do is actually split the ship up into the different sections. So these just come right off and then you can actually just split the vessel apart like this. So we'll, we'll deal with that big boy later. Let me just see what I can do to get rid of these here. So let's just kind of detach these strings. And yeah, I guess I can just pull them right out. It feels a little iffy, but I guess that works just fine. Oh, preferably, I want to actually remove the entire block here. I don't know if this is going to be, oh, this might be a harder task than I thought. Okay, you know what? That one's staying in, whatever. Ideally, I would have removed a block like this, 
This one is probably a little bit more prone to breakage because it's not attached to anything, but it's not a huge deal. That's the way it works for this side. I'll try to get this one off here next. Man, the same, same thing where that, that piece is just not coming out. Uh, if you don't know, there's kind of a two by six plate in here that's really being stubborn about staying in that I personally would have preferred to have come out with the mask, but eh, it is what it is. Okay, so that's out. Yoink these guys off and kind of wiggle this one out to do the same. And yeah, okay. So now those are out. I honestly don't really know how much else I can take this apart. So obviously I'm going to remove these stands at the bottom. But yeah, I feel like I kind of just have to carry like this. Like I have to wrap this in saran wrap and then just carry it. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Let me first just get all the other little bits and pieces off of these. Just the random stuff that are liable to be breaking apart or falling off. I also want to remove these engine pieces because they actually stick outwards. So I'm going to get rid of the engines, which actually works. This is a really cool set. The engines actually move like pistons when you actually turn the propeller. So that's a really cool feature. Anyways, I'm going to try to remove these right here. And yeah, so here we have three sections of the boat. These are going to go in the luggages first because they are absolutely the largest chunks of anything that I'll be packing. I'm going to wrap these up and we'll see how we can fit them in. Well, that's a problem. So I have run out of saran wrap. That is very sad. This was going so well too because it's fully rectangular. I actually have a lot of faith in the saran wrap to keep this together, but I'm out. So I'm going to go ahead and place a quick order on Amazon. This is going to sit here for a while while I wait for the saran wrap to come. And we're going to turn our attention to the rest of these builds at least the ones that don't require saran wrap. That's unfortunate. One thing I can do now is at least bag up all of the random little bits and pieces of the Titanic that is just pretty much sitting here loose. These obviously do not need saran wrap, thankfully. I can imagine that these smokestacks will get severely damaged and probably just crumble apart by the time they reach their destination. That's gonna be unfortunate, but thankfully they're not very complicated builds. I am also going to be separating the different flagpoles out because I really do not want these to get damaged in transit. So we're just going to be breaking all these masks apart and making sure that they do not get damaged whatsoever as I pack this all away. And then just kind of wrapping up the string as nicely and neatly as we can. I'm sure that it'll get tangled a little bit, but hopefully not too, too much. And then try to put all this stuff in here. And let's see, is there anything else that we can fit in this bag? I guess these bits and pieces that you use to separate the different sections of the Titanic can fit in here as well. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with how this is going. Let's see, yeah, the side can go in as well. So we'll take another bag for these stands and the engines because those are, at least the engines are a little finicky. I don't want the parts to get mixed in to make assembly a little bit harder for us. So let's just kind of try to make this as easy on myself as possible and just separate it out into smaller bags, which really is probably gonna be the big takeaway of the video is the more I separate them out into their own little bags, the easier it will be to actually reassemble these when I actually get back home. So I did not plan to immediately reassemble all of these for sure, because that's gonna be a lot of work, but as much as I can, we'll see, or at least we're gonna spend the end of the video taking a look at how good or badly they survive. And this Ziploc has a massive hole in it. That's really unfortunate, can't use this one. So use this different one instead, that's unfortunate. And let's just pack all this up now. All right, so we got our two little baggies here for the Titanic. I'm going to leave them here because the rest of this is just kind of going to sit here for now and we'll move on to the rest of the builds. So it's now the next day. I am still waiting on the saran wrap to get here, but in the meantime, I think you get the gist of it. I'm just going to put this on time-lapse mode and you're going to take a look at some quick sped up footage of me packing basically all I can. If I run into something interesting, I want to kind of explain how I packed. I will pause the video and do so and showcase it. But for now, let's do this lightning round style. So I'm about two hours into packing. I've covered most of this area and Houston, we have another problem because now I am out of Ziplocs that are not absolutely massive. So obviously these massive Ziplocs are good for maybe breaking apart stuff like the house here or even some of the larger temples, but 
For a lot of the smaller stuff, they just simply are not that practical because that would mean I'd have to jam a ton of smaller sets all into one Ziploc, and then it makes it harder to rebuild because I don't know which pieces go to what. So we're, I guess, gonna have to pause this for now until I order new Ziplocs, presumably that will come tomorrow, or maybe I'll just run out to the store and get some today. But in the meantime, the saran wrap has actually arrived, so I can go back to the Titanic and some of these larger buildings and at least try my best to wrap up what I can. I've actually set aside a couple sets that I figured I would definitely have to wrap, such as the platform for the Chinese or Lunar New Year ice skating ring set right here. This is definitely something I wanted to wrap with saran wrap, so I kind of took everything breakable off of it, put it in its own Ziploc, and now this is ready to wrap. The same will go for some of the Kingdom's Tower stuff, like this guy right here. And I definitely do want to saran wrap the Ninjago Temple, specifically because I actually got this in Dubai. When I brought it from Dubai back to the States, I tried to take it apart in different sections for the Ziplocs, and it was absolutely demolished. I basically just had to rebuild the entire thing from scratch. I really don't want to do that again, so I'm going to try my best with saran wrap and see if I can actually do it a little bit better this time. So let's just go ahead and do that right now. All right, so I have currently burnt through one entire roll of saran wrap. I've got the Home Alone house wrapped up, both modular buildings I had to wrap, as well as a few other miscellaneous stuff, like we've got the Ninjago Temple here, all fully wrapped up. So I'm hoping that is mostly what I'll need to wrap up with this type of wrap. I've seen maybe a couple other things over here. I might do the dinosaur or the tower behind me, but really for the most part, I think that this should be good. I hopefully do not need to buy it more. And I also now have a ton of Ziplocs. So I'm going to now try to put everything together. And at this point, I'll probably just make the rest of the video or showcase most of the rest of the video as a full on time lapse of wrapping and packing all the sets. At the end, we're gonna walk through exactly how I plan to fit all of these into my suitcases and exactly how I wrapped up some of the different sets. So let's just get into it right now. Oh, I've done a lot, but there's still a lot to go. Ha, I thought I had enough saran wrap. Yeah, I obviously did not have enough saran wrap, as you can see right here. I had to go and buy three more rolls. So yeah, I really thought I was done, but no, no I was not. So three more plastic wraps were obtained from the group. Oh, did I get four? Well, no, no, I got four, man. So I had to get four of these things. Now it's time to get back to packing. So I ran out of saran wrap again. So I went to a quick trip to the grocery store and now, I shall never run out again. Well, I mean, I will, I, I probably will. I mean, honestly, I'm probably gonna have to go back, but hopefully I shall never run out again. We have four boxes of saran wrap. Let's keep on going and well, wrap this all up. All right, so we're kind of getting into our crunch time here. It is currently 10 p.m. the night before I have to leave on my trip. I've packed all this stuff so far, but I still have everything here under the table and on top of the table to go. Now, I did try to pack some of the stuff on this wall over here. I know I said I wasn't probably gonna do it, but I did wanna bring a couple of those home. I should stop doing that because I really have to pack everything else. I think I'll finish in time, but it will be tight. So we're gonna have to do a lightning round here. And right before I put everything in the suitcases, I'm gonna kind of run through exactly what I've all packed here. So. Let's do a quick time lapse of all this stuff getting packed. Hopefully that'll fly by and I'll let you know how long this is gonna take me. So we're almost done. I just have a little pile down here as well as the city buildings up here and then we'll be finally done packing. However, it is now midnight and at the time of recording this, it is March 1st, which means I gotta go do something real fast. We'll be right back. So this very, very important task I had to do was purchase everything for my March 1st LEGO order. So yeah, this is pretty much every single new LEGO set that released March 1st, at least the ones I was interested in. I had to quickly order them because I'm very afraid some of these are gonna go out of stock. It's time to bring out the luggages. So we have two large size check-in bags in the form of our Remoa luggages here. So these are two pretty large and bulky suitcases which are gonna be storing the majority of our stuff inside, but just in case there's anything a little bit more fragile that I do actually want to hand carry, I have my little hand carrying bag as well, which 
will be used to store some of the smaller stuff, especially stuff that I'm very worried might crack or break or be liable to be totally smashed. I'm gonna put it in here because I will be hand carrying this one myself. So with these luggages aside, let's now fill them up. Now that that's done with, it's time to get back to our regularly scheduled packing. And we are so, so close. That Lego order only took 15 minutes, so we are still sort of on schedule. All right, so it is exactly one o'clock a.m. Um, so it's been, I don't know, three, four hours since I started this. And yeah, it's all done. Oh. Okay, so we still got a lot of work to do because I now need to figure out how to put all of this into these suitcases. So, yeah, okay, man, I really should not have pushed this out so late. I am really tired. I don't even know why I'm tired. Oh, no, no, I do know why I'm tired. I pulled an all-nighter last night for my startup. <sighs> yeah. It's probably not a good idea because I was not packing. Um, but hey, anyway, it's now time to take all the stuff and throw it in the suitcases. And then I will finally have some sleep. Gaze upon the majesty of all of these Lego creations finally packed up. It has been many, many hours and I have finally gotten them all done. This is really, really a happy moment, the happiest moment of my life because I am finally done. The shelves are empty, the world is healing. That is until my next Lego order and I will have to do this all again. You'll notice the tumbler has been removed from the wall because I wanted to specifically bring that home. Otherwise, I am not touching any of these. Let's see what else we have here. So besides the vehicles there, we have this massive pile. I have my computer playing some packing music and let's just go ahead and get all this packed in the luggages. Okay, so here is my general strategy with packing all these stuff. As you can see there, we have two different luggages. These are the large luggages I'll check in. Since this is the US, the maximum weight for each of these luggages is 50 pounds, which means I'm going to have to be very economical about how I put stuff in here to prevent them from exceeding the weight limit. Now, this is my one carry-on, and thankfully there's not really a weight limit for the carry-ons. I don't really expect it to go over 50 pounds, obviously, but I definitely will be packing the heavier and denser things into here that take up a lot of weight, such to alleviate the weight in these luggages, as well as packing anything I deem to be especially fragile, or really anything I just really do not want to have to rebuild, because anything in here is definitely going to be treated nicer than everything else in here. Now, if all else fails, because I'm looking at this right now, there's pretty much no way that all of this will fit into just these luggages. I do have an ace up my sleeve, and that ace is a random large either Ikea or Lego bag that I will whip out as my second carry-on and just basically throw everything else I can into there and just be very, very careful nothing spills out as I carry it around the airport. It's not ideal. I'm going to have to be dealing with basically four different luggages, but It'll have to make do. So what I'm gonna do is I will start off first with these two large luggages first. I'm gonna make sure to put some of the relatively lighter stuff, but still stuff that needs to be packed in, hopefully stuff that's larger but light into these luggages and see how much of a dent we're able to make in the pile. So let's do that right now. Thankfully, these luggages are pretty hardy. They can take a beating. Personally, I only use Ramoa brand luggages, and they're really good because they have this hard aluminum case right here, which means that pretty much it's gonna be very difficult to actually damage the Lego inside. So let's hop these guys out here. Back there you can see there's a good amount of space in here, of course, once I remove these flaps. So this can hold quite a lot. Uh, let's see exactly how much it can hold though. And let's just do that right now. So this is a deeper compartment than the other one. So I'm gonna start by placing stuff in this deep compartment. I don't know if I wanna risk it. I feel like the Titanic is pretty sturdy, but I might actually just hand carry that because of the weight. So honestly, I'm just gonna start looking around here. What is large, but probably won't get broken up too, too much. 
starting with some of the buildings here. Ooh, I don't know about some of this stuff. I mean, this is definitely going to get splintered or absolutely demolished in here because really what I'm doing is I'm just throwing these in and praying that there is enough space to carry everything. So there really isn't a specific order to these. I'm just going to pack all of them away. Each of these are just different random bags of Lego that I have thrown together somewhat. Now, this is interesting. So this is the stand to the Monkey Kid City of Lanterns. Am I gonna trust that in here? Yeah, we're gonna go for it. We'll go for it and see if it survives. Let's, uh, let's hope and pray. We've also got the Friends Canal houseboat here, or the river boat. Uh, didn't really know exactly how to pack this, so I just saran wrapped it. We'll also put that, oh, I guess I can, mm, I don't know, maybe, maybe we'll put that in, we'll set it aside for now. Uh, we've got a city mining vehicle here, which, yes, we go there, but I don't think that's the best use of space. Let's see, this really is just a game of playing. What is the best use of space when actually packing every single little bit of thing into these luggages? Because thankfully, they are already all bagged up. So it is not necessarily easy, but it is doable to figure out where everything should go. It's just a matter of figuring out, okay, how are we going to pack each and every little bit into here? So let's see, we've got this right here. The Bionicles definitely are not going to break. That's what I love about Bionicles. You can really throw them around and they are going to be all okay. Now this is just some random miscellaneous bags here. A lot of these are just random small stuff and I may come to regret it because there are a lot of larger things I need to pack in here too. The hospital from Lego City is going to sit here. I don't know how well it's going to survive but we'll see. Got the, the city police station as well. See, any other larger item that I can put in here? Like, I don't know, this is a boat. Okay, we can put the... Oh, that's a little tight. Okay, boat upside down right there. Um, I see a large, like... Oh, this is really... Uh, this is very fragile. I don't think I'm going to want to pack that. Uh, whew, let's see, okay. Really, it's just kind of seeing what fits in here. And I'm just looking at this right now. I will absolutely need other bags. I don't even know if I can take all this home in one go because this one suitcase is already almost filled up on one side and I feel like I've made literally not a dent in, the, in this. Like, I don't think I've made any sort of significant dent at all in, in this luggage. So, oh man. Yeah, we're gonna have to figure, figure something out, that's for sure. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I don't. I, th I think I'll have to take two trips, or I'll have to send them back with someone else. Um, I really don't think I'm gonna be able to just bring all this home. Well, okay. Rocket ship from Monkey Kid. This feels pretty sturdy to me. I'm gonna put that in here. I'm gonna put the other rocket ship parts in here because I do want those to pack together. Now, hmm. It's, a little, it's getting a little dicey in here. It's, it's getting pretty tight. I don't know if I'm going to be able to pack really anything else unless it's something that's really flat. Like, uh, this is pushing it. Like, maybe that, but that, that's really pushing it there. Um, there's a base plate or something, so I just want to throw in like, little things into this compartment. Maybe something small can go through. So, minifigs? Yeah, that's good. Minifigs are not going to split. Or if they break, it doesn't really matter. Um, Brickheads, a lot more brickheads. Vehicles, more bionicle stuff. Ah, bionic? Yeah, I'm not gonna push that. Um, I may have exhausted this side already. Let me see, is there anything else that I can put in? Maybe this other bag of mini things is gonna be good. Yeah, okay, that, that makes me feel happy. Um, can we push it with another mini fig bag though? Uh, it's gonna be tight. It's gonna be tight. We'll see. We'll see. We will see. Okay, so what we are going to do is adhere this strap onto here. Make sure this is all tight up there. Ah! So that, that was that was that was bad. So the way this works is that this strap goes underneath everything and anchors this down. Wow, I might, please don't tell me I'm gonna have to take everything out. Oh, maybe. Oh dear. Oh, that was, that was not good. That was no bueno. 
Now I'm going to pull it not too hard, fairly gently. There we go. Okay, so this side, let's say, is almost packed to the brim. Maybe I can squeeze in, actually, I can squeeze in one or two things here. Now, what am I saying? You can go there. It, it's tight, it's tight, it's, it's real tight. But, uh, okay, so maybe we can pop a few things into here, but for the most part, we are, we are almost at full capacity. Let's do the other side, which again has much less space than that part. So, other side here, I want to focus on putting some of the larger things in here that I really do feel need the space, but I don't even I think that's a little too large. I don't even think that these will fit. Um, mining vehicle here. And these are the saran wrap. I have a little bit more faith. I may be proven completely wrong by the end of this video, but I have a little bit more faith in these saran wrap Lego pieces because I'm hoping that will make them kind of keep their shape. We will see. I'm going to speed this up until I have this side filled up because you probably get the point at this point. Yeah, so I think I've kind of filled this up. Again, not a major dent made here. I probably, again, will need to take many, many trips back home to bring this all back, but this is all full. Now keep in mind, I have not weighed this for 50 pounds yet. So I may be in for a very unpleasant surprise when I weigh this and find out that I have to take half the stuff out because it weighs too much and we're gonna have to spend a lot of time optimizing this. But I'm praying, please, please, please be under 50 pounds or at least at 50 pounds or close to 50 pounds. I'm coming from Philly, they don't really care over here. So let's please hope that this is gonna be okay. I'm gonna close this up so it can do some weighing. Now comes the hard part. Will this actually close? So, let's... Oh, no. No, 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 no. This is not gonna... Nope. Mm -hmm. This is, this is... Uh, nope, 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 nope. This is not gonna close. Okay. Okay. Okay, okay, we're fine. We're fine, we're fine, this, this is fine. This is fine. This is, I mean, that's just a waste. Like, that, that would be a waste of time. Like, okay, we're gonna try it again. Look, look, lots and lots of room here. Come on. Ah! I think, I think, mm, it's, it's gonna be risky. It's gonna be risky. Let's see. Ooh, I don't know how I feel about this. Uh, something, something on this side that's really. No, no, I really, I don't want to damage a Lego before it even gets here. Ah, oh, jeez. Oh no, 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 no. Did not mean to undo that. Ah. Oh. Oh, I'm not happy about how this is closing. I'm really forcing it. Oh. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I think what's screwing me over is the placement of the boat. This boat here is what is causing all the problems. I'm going to take that out. I'm going to put some other stuff in this place. It was a perfect fit, too. It looked like a perfect fit. But alas, it was not to be. So it's fine. It's fine. I'm fine. We're fine. We're chilling. This is a fun activity. I love packing. Die. OK. Uh, let's move on. Oh, no, 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 no. Please don't lose the straps again. OK. We're going to try this again without the, the dumb thing in the way. And how's it how's it worse? Wait, on that road, how is this worse than it was before? No, okay, I just have to pull away. It's legitimately worse. How could this happen? We're smocking this. Apparently not.
Okay, no, no, we're good. We're good. We're getting it. We're good. Ah, success! I don't like how it's bulging, but success. Oh, that's pretty heavy. Mm, I can lift it with one hand. It's probably fine. I'm going to weigh this later, but I'm going to, for now, consider this suitcase a uh, done. So this is done, and our pile... <laughs> oh, this is hopeless. I'm never packing all this. <laughs> oh, there is no way I'm packing all this. Like, there, there's literally no way this happens. Like. Oh my god. I think my only option is to convince at least two to three of my friends to bring a little bit of Lego back with them, because I'm bringing a ton of friends back to my home, and, and pray that they pass. Ooh, do I trust them with the Lego, though? Do I really trust them with the goods? Can you explain yourselves, Teresa. What, what, is, what am I looking at? You know... I just wanted to throw the hammer. You threw the, I'm, I'm sorry. Can you show me the hammer that you threw here, Sri? Like, can, can you explain what am I looking at here? Oh no, I don't think so. Ooh, maybe one of them. Maybe, maybe I'll trust one of them with the goods. Hmm, it's tight though, but I leave tomorrow. So when am I gonna bring them? No, no, I, that's not gonna work. It, it won't work because I leave tomorrow and I will not have a chance to bring any Lego over to them, nor explain to them how to pack them, so I think I'm on my own. Okay, well, this might be the quick end to this video. I'm going to pack up the second large suitcase there, and then we'll see what a dent we make on the pile with that. So, we've reached the point where not even my phone wants to witness this. I set it to time-lapse mode to film me placing the Lego in the suitcase, and it died after the first four seconds. So, no time lapse, but is it just me? Or has the pile gotten bigger? Yeah, so these are full. Like, these two suitcases, I will not risk opening them again. Maybe if I have to, but they're basically full. I have the one hand carry left, and then one presumably large Lego shopping bag. Cool, 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 no doubt, no doubt, no doubt. In the midst of this mental breakdown, I forgot I still had my carry-on luggage for what it's worth. So, here I am packing it. It's not going to do much to the pile. Not really making a dent there, but I'm trying. I'm putting as much stuff as I can in it. It's not really doing anything though, but here I am. Look, look at me go. Go, Chris. You got this. Positive self-talk. Let's go. Expert packing job. Okay, next. It is now time to play a fun game called How Much of This Can I Pack in a Bag and Fit on an Airplane in a Hand Carry? And the answer is not much. Not much at all. Uh, yeah, so these are all full. I do not think I can put anything else in them. I spent the past 45 minutes trying to optimize the space inside these after they were packed. Like, this was not on camera. I took everything out, I put them all back in, I swapped some stuff around, and yeah, I think they are packed pretty much to the brim. So now it is time to find the single biggest bag I can find here and just manage to pack all the stuff in, or at least a lot of the stuff. So what I'm gonna try to do is I really wanted to take home the tumbler in particular, because I wanna showcase this on my Batmobile tumbler wall. I'm gonna take this home for sure, Here's the extra bag of stuff that goes with it. I really wanted to hand carry this, which is the Ninjago Spinjitsu Temple from the Core Wave because this got destroyed the last time I threw it in a check-in luggage and I just don't want to have to rebuild it again. So I definitely want to pack this. The Titanic is a nice to have. I would love to bring the Titanic home. I do not know if that's possible. This massive bucket wheel excavator, I mean, I feel like this is something I'm gonna have to hand carry at some point anyway, because this is not fitting in a standard luggage. I mean, like, this is, yeah, that's not ever gonna fit. So I have a feeling I'm gonna have to carry this home. What probably will end up happening is most of the stuff that's saran wrapped here is going to get brought home, and almost everything else is going to be put into storage for bringing home later. So I gotta grab this, because these are the other pieces of the bucket wheel excavator. 
if I'm getting really ambitious, and oh boy, I mean, we're, we'll see what happens. I have this massive uh, movable Lego Technic T-Rex with control center stand. This is the control center two set. I'm gonna put that in the maybe pile over here. I mean, I guess this whole thing is a maybe pile, depending on if I can even find a bag. Um, ooh, okay. So all, all these other Ziplocs can just, I mean, oh. And I did pack the insides of this wheel thingy from Monkey Kid, so I'm gonna have to bring that for sure. Yeah, let's get cracking and see what we can bring home. I'm not very optimistic at this point. It's 2.30 a.m. I've done it. I've done it! Okay, so here we have the amazing bag. Inside this Lego bag, you might be wondering, maybe this doesn't look too impressive. I mean, this is just the largest size of bag you can get from a Lego store. I mean, it's really nothing too big. Well, you see, this massive problem, this massive guy right here includes not only the entire Titanic ship, but it also includes the Ultimate Collector style Batmobile Tumbler. It has one of the Lunar New Year ice rink sets in it. It has my laptop. It has a ton of gifts I'm bringing back to my friends, so that's not Lego, that doesn't matter. And it has a ton of the Ziplocs that I managed to cram into literally every possible space in this bag. There is not a single spot in this bag that is wide open other than some spots on the top where things will just fall off. So my plan for tomorrow to get to the airport, I will hold this in one hand. This is one of my hand carry bags. Oh my God. Oh, that's gonna be scary. Never mind. My plan for the airport is I will take my hand carry roller bag right here. I will, oh, oh man, this is, oh God. Oh geez, okay. I will hold this like this. Okay, so I can, I can roll this. Can I do this in one hand? Uh, here, what if I get very creative? Okay, so this is one hand. There, there, yeah, you see, I got my, my arm here. Yeah, this is some good maneuverability. And then, I've got my two big boys. This I think I can also take with one hand. Yeah, okay, so, I shall be walking around the airport like this tomorrow. So I've got my two big boy suitcases here, I got the little boy carry-ons here, and all of this and all of that is going to be packed at some other point, not anytime soon. So I will have to bring those home some other time, I don't know when that will be, but for now I think that this is literally the max I can carry. Now. If the airport doesn't let me on with this, I will literally be screwed. I do not know what I will do. Please, 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 I will pray they will not notice this when I'm checking in. In fact, when I'm checking in, I'll just kind of like hold it to my side a little bit and, and shuffle forwards and, and do that. But I mean, last time I brought home a bag of similar size and they didn't really care, so I'm hoping it'll be okay. Uh, we'll see. These will obviously have to be checked in. I don't think they're over 50 pounds though, because I can lift them up very, very easily. Like this, this is not, this is not an issue to lift up really. So I don't think, ooh, it's a little bit of an issue, but I don't think it's over 50 pounds. I will weigh it now to be sure. But now it has come to the point in the video where I say goodbye to this apartment for now, and we transport ourselves to the airport to see what destinations lie ahead. Let's go. I forgot one thing. Alas, dear viewers, as much as I want to, I cannot leave my apartment a mess. So, clean up, clean up, everybody do your share. It is time to clean up all of this. I don't know where I'm going to put all of these. I will find some space or some room, some closet to put these for now, because I need the shelves open for the new Lego that I just ordered. <laughs> So these are all gonna have to go away. So I'm going to systematically get rid of every single piece of these. I don't know where they're gonna go, but they'll be put in storage. So let's speed that all up.
The time is 4.27 a.m. And it's time for me to get ready to go to sleep. Let's go, Mario. Oh yeah, we're gonna cut to the airport now. Cut, 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 airport. I am an absolute madman because we have not cut to the airport. You see, instead, I had these Super Mario sets sitting around unbuilt, and I figured since my Mario and Luigi figures are at home, why even have them here? So the bag just got a lot more full. Every single one of these sets has now been included in this bag, and this is a little worrying. Not gonna lie, I'm a little worried by that. I think that's part of the Titanic, and this is even more worrying. So. We'll see how well it survives and pray that it doesn't rip apart because then I would be absolutely screwed. I don't know what I would do if it rips apart, frankly. Um, when in doubt, overwhelmed with saran wrap, we'll see how well this holds up. Let's-a go. Yeah, crisis has struck. I need to go. I will explain exactly what's going on in voiceover, but yeah, Lego has completely screwed me over today. I'm gonna be late to my flight. Bye. So you remember how I placed that order last night? On March 1st, at around midnight, I placed a over $2,000 order on every single one of the brand new March sets that I wanted to pick up. So I woke up this morning and I got an email from Lego saying my entire order had been canceled because I was over the purchase limit for the Lego Art Mosaic Batman sets. Now, when checking out, I was not informed that there was a purchase limit. I specifically wanted to buy multiple copies because I wanted to actually be able to build all the different versions of the mosaic. I would have figured that they would have actually facilitated that, but unfortunately, apparently not. So instead of just, I don't know, canceling the one item from my order, they canceled the entire thing. So at first I was like, yeah, okay, whatever. I'll just replace the order, not a big deal. They'll send me a refund, I'll buy everything again. Kind of annoying, but not a huge deal. Right? Wrong. You see, I forgot that I spent $800 worth of VIP points as a discount on this order. So I had a ton of VIP points stacked up and now I'm for an $800 discount and I had spent all those points on my order. So when I went back to my account to place the new order, they had simply just canceled the order I placed and not refunded me the VIP points. They had only refunded me the amount that I spent on my credit card, which was out $800. So that was a big problem. So at this point, I had to call LEGO customer service, but I had already planned a couple of online meetings this day for my actual work, so I had to get through those meetings first, and I immediately had to call LEGO after those. So when I called LEGO, they explained to me that their system is quote unquote, not advanced enough to handle the issue I was having, so they basically just said, well, our bad, we'll, we'll just cancel the order, we'll refund you the VIP points, and then you can place the order again. Oh, and by the way, you don't mind that three out of the multiple items on your list are now backordered till May 27, right? So at this point, I'm like, wait, no, 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 I placed the order at midnight last night. I'm not even going to be at this address by May 27. I would ideally want to have some of these sets not two and a half months late. So they could not do anything because specifically the one set that was back ordered until the end of May was the Technic McLaren race car. This is a really special Technic 18 plus set. It sold out almost immediately. And when I called, they were like, yeah, you can place the order now, but it's not gonna arrive until the end of May. So obviously that wasn't gonna work. So what I said was, okay, place the order for everything that isn't back ordered. I'll deal with the rest and try to get it from Lego stores today. So immediately I was like, well, shoot, I only have very limited time. I was supposed to leave for the airport in 30 minutes, but now I have to go to my local Lego store here in Philly and see if they have the McLaren in stock. So I call up my local Lego store. Of course, the closest one to me obviously sold out. Just my luck, right? They didn't have it in stock. So then I call the one that's literally 45 minutes away and they're like, yeah, we have three in stock. We don't think they're gonna sell out too fast, but just come as soon as you can. I'm sure it'll be there. They unfortunately were not able to put one on hold for me because it was a day one release. So they're not allowed to put it on hold. So I was like, okay, they've got three in stock. Gonna take me 45 minutes to get there. Whatever, I'll bite the bullet and go. So I take an Uber that cost me literally like $50. I pay $50 for an Uber. I go 45 minutes over to the store. And when I get there, they are sold out of the McLaren. 
So I literally spent $50 to go there for nothing. Thankfully, they did have two of the other sets that were back ordered. So I did get two of those, and I got the Lego Art Batman sets I needed. But they did not have the McLaren, which was the one I was most worried about because that one was back ordered till the end of May. So then I spend another $50 to drive back from the Lego store back to my house. So at this point, I'm out $100. I don't even have the McLaren. I have literally just been wasting time, and I am an hour late to when I was supposed to leave for the airport. So I'm like, okay, screw it. I really got to go to the airport now. I run, like I book it to the airport. I call an Uber, another like freaking $40. So now I've already spent $140 on Uber this day, and I finally make it to the airport. And you will not guess what happens next. So I get to the airport, and I will admit, at least some of the blame is on me at this point because I'm really rushing. I'm stressing. I'm like, oh man, I'm going to miss my flight. So I'm running up to security. I go through the TSA pre-check. I put my Lego bag on the TSA belt and it gets stuck halfway through the belt due to the sheer size of the Lego. I, I kid you not, you can't make this up. I'm standing there just waiting for my flight. Like, the most stressed I've been in a long time, and the bag just will not come out. So they have to call over literally six guys, and there's just utter pain as the six guys take a massive rod and just start whacking the bag through the security. So here I am just standing, like looking, looking at how they're massacring my poor boy, like slamming this metal rod into my like already very fragile paper Lego bag. And it comes out of the other side, there's a lot of rips, there's a lot of tears, but it's holding. It's holding, all right? So it's holding for now. So I'm like, okay, this is holding. I, I think the worst of it is over. I literally sprint to my flight, which is, may I add, not an easy feat carrying that massive bag around. I get onto my flight and oh, our troubles were just beginning because I board the plane. Thankfully, thank God, I paid for a first class ticket on this flight. I almost didn't, but thank God I did. So I'm in, I'm in seat number one. I don't think I would have survived if I wasn't in first class, but there I was, seat number one, and I have to put the Lego bag up in the overhead bin. So I'm like, okay, that's not a big problem. So I managed to squeeze it barely into the overhead bin. It doesn't fit, I have to take some items out, but it's not a big deal, it's holding. And then the flight attendant is like, ha, huh, what happens if we just slam another suitcase into it and then slam the door shut without checking if it'll actually close? So this all happens and the bag literally disintegrates. Another person's luggage is thrown into it. Lego pieces are flying everywhere. The half of the Titanic nearly falls on someone's head. And there I am, I'm just watching this and I'm like, what on earth is going on? So I look over and I just see my poor, beautiful Lego bag ripped up into multiple different pieces. Lego pieces just scattered everywhere because as you remember, I brought the Lego Super Mario sets. I brought the sealed Super Mario sets. Of course, in the action of doing this, the bags ruptured. So half of these sealed bags full of just loose Lego pieces just erupted all over the plate. So here I am, sitting in my seat, watching Lego pieces rain down all over me, and I'm like, oh no, this is, this is not gonna be good. This is, this is real bad. So I proceed to spend the next three hours of the flight. We take off, of course. I have to wait for them to take off and everything. But then as soon as we're off and I can stand up, I stand right up, and as unobtrusively as I can, I pick up every single one of the little pieces that fell off of the bag. But that was not my main problem, because the question wasn't picking it up. I mean, dedicate enough time, I would have been able to find everything. Or at least I hope I found everything. No, no, no. The question was, how on earth was I going to leave the airplane with all of the stuff with a completely destroyed bag? So. This was a big, big problem because again, as I mentioned, I had the Titanic, which was split into three different chunks. I had the tumbler. I had so many different Ziplocs and I literally just had loose pieces, just loose pieces with ripped bags. So I was kind of screwed, not gonna lie. So there I am, I'm like, okay, I really got to brainstorm here. And thank God, I was able to talk to a flight attendant. And oh man, they, they were not happy with the situation either. I, I really feel bad for, for having to put them all through this, but they were able to work with me and they got me these massive, massive trash bags. So I literally just take these massive trash bags and just dump everything in. At this point, I am not even caring about things staying together. Like at this point, I really just wanna make sure that I'm getting all the Lego off the plane. So we were sitting, we were brainstorming 
multiple solutions. I was thinking, okay, can I go out? Can I get a wheelchair and come back in? Nope, once I leave the plane, I can't come back in. I was like, okay, can I maybe phone a friend, see if anyone I know is around in the location because I knew a lot of my friends were going to the same destination and see maybe they can help bring me. And they were like, no, you can't have them go on the plane or help you carry stuff out. So I was like, okay, well, we're kind of screwed because I need to carry these all out by myself. And I really don't want to have to ask my seatmate and bother them to help me carry stuff out. So I'm going to figure this out on my own. So eventually we get the massive trash bags. I wrap everything up in a big, big trash bag, throw it on top of my hand carry, and somehow by the grace of God managed to drag that massive bag, which obviously felt like it was so much bigger and weighed so much more than it actually did originally. Because for whatever reason, the bulkier it was, the harder it was to carry it around. So. I take the massive bag and I finally manage to bring it outside and be done with this absolute nightmare. So I was planning on sleeping on the plane because I didn't sleep the night before. <laughs> that didn't happen. And then it was time to get home and just see how bad exactly was the damage after this literally insane day where everything that could have gone wrong went wrong. Oh yeah, and in case you're wondering if I ever got the McLaren, Thankfully, I did because my local LEGO store manager in Seattle is the best and they set one aside for me as soon as I called. So thank you so much. All right, so we've made it back to the main collection. Here we have the suitcases and I've just opened them up. And yeah, as you just saw, I'm actually pretty happy with how everything is looking. Pretty much everything is more or less intact. I definitely do not have the time to rebuild everything right now, but there's a few things I kind of just wanted to get out and make sure they survived intact. Most of all, the Titanic, because obviously, as you just saw, the Titanic went through a lot of stress and pain during this trip, and I was very curious to see how well it held up. So let's take a look at that right now. What I want to do now is kind of walk through all of the different sets that I was able to pack in, just as I kind of go through the process of unpacking this. You can see one of the Bricklink AFL designer program trucks, the bike one here. I'm sure there's maybe a few pieces that are lifting off, but it's not a big, big deal. I can just kind of put them back on. And I also threw in a city mining truck in there, plus one of the creator tiger bird side pieces. We've got the dinosaurs Mosasaurus, as well as a ton of just kind of miscellaneous things here and there. Pretty much all seems to be intact because I really just crammed a lot of really small, tiny, random things into here. Here's part of the Ninja Ultra Combo mech right here with the coal vehicle. Looks like pretty much nothing broke off, which, uh, yeah, literally nothing broke off of this. That's impressive. We have some more just random miscellaneous stuff in here. Now let's kind of move on. This is part of the Monkey Kid City of Lanterns. Also looks 100% intact. So, yeah, you're probably going to notice a common thread. Everything's pretty much intact. So I'm very, very happy with this packing job. Yeah, look at this. It's the uh, Ideas Sonic the Hedgehog base here. I just really wrapped this boy in saran wrap, and there you go. It's all fully uh, packed up. Here's the other pieces to the Sonic set, which even the tree looks like it survived for the most part. So that's actually really surprising how pretty much everything in here just kind of stayed the way they were. So there we have it. We've got some of the larger tower bridge stuff, which also looks pretty solid to me. Pretty happy with that. Some more bits and pieces from the Home Alone house set, which those pieces loose in there. I did just throw in loose before I packed it. So that is definitely good to go. Got some Minecraft stuff where this looks pretty happy as is. And yeah, even like some of the architecture Singapore bases also is looking totally good. Of course, the Bionicles stayed intact because obviously it's a Bionicle build. Now, this was the one I was most worried about because I was worried that this was going to get crushed or something. But no, this is totally fine. It's the arcade from the Bricklink AFL designer program. So yeah, that's nice. Let's see, what else have we got here? We've got the police boat from Lego City. So obviously that's pretty much intact. Wasn't too worried about that. And over here we have some other stuff. Yeah, as I was saying, there's the Zane vehicle there. We've got some trains. So these look mm, intact more or less. Yeah, I mean, this is, I mean, this is definitely just intact. Yeah. Huh. So this is pretty nice. Even the, the roof, like even, not even these rounded glass pieces broke in. I'm very, very, honestly, very surprised that all, all this stayed together. I'm very happy about that. Yeah. Okay. Let's see what else have we got here. So close this back up because I'm going to need to transport these to a different part of my collection where they aren't just kind of smack in the middle of the room here. But let's take a look at this other one. And yeah, for the most part, I am seeing a lot of pretty intact stuff. We've got, sure, the hospital is crumbling a little bit, but it's nothing that can't be fixed by just pressing bricks together. I'm not going to do it right now, but I think that should be okay. We've got 
Some of the Monkey Kid rocket ship pieces, these all look totally okay to me. Kai's dragon from Ninjago, and yeah, even the basis to some of the rarer LEGO idea sets survived fully intact as well, so I'm pretty happy about that. So, for the most part, I think that these survived fairly intact. Again, going over to this bag over here, yeah, we got a lot of just pieces that are just falling out everywhere, mostly because I'm guessing most of them are from this bag uh, that, that just broke apart. So, that is unfortunate, but I think I'm fairly happy with how the rest of these survived, surprisingly enough. I mean, besides the pieces falling out, which isn't great, but I mean, hopefully all the pieces are there and I was able to salvage most things from the overhead bin. I'm pretty happy with this, even looking at the carry-on compartment here. Obviously everything in the carry-on is totally fine because these ones were hand carried, so everything is totally good right here. All right, so I think that about sums this up. That was a crazy trip and boy, do I have a lot to unpack. So this is nice. Literally nothing has been broken off of this. Everything pretty much survived intact despite literally being thrown around, shoved into different security detectors, and crammed into the overhead flight bin. No, this is pretty much all okay. Sure, there might be a couple of things that broke off here and there, like some of the life support boats and whatnot, like some of these broke off, but really... All of the important things are pretty much intact, which I'm very, very happy with. Another win for Saran Wrap, so yeah, here we go. There's the Titanic. All right, so with that, honestly, we have summed up this honestly crazy trip. The past, I want to say, 24, 48 hours have kind of been a whirlwind for me in terms of getting all this Lego transported. I knew it was a bad idea to bring that paper Lego bag. Somehow I knew, maybe maybe some people told me it was a bad idea, but I didn't listen, and I have grown to regret that. But I think we were able to salvage it. There were a couple hours on the plane where I was very, very concerned about how I was going to actually take everything off of the plane. But it all worked out, so we are all okay. I hope you enjoyed this kind of random, almost vlog-style Duckbricks video. Let me know down in the comments below if you like this style of video, if you want to see me do it more, because, I mean, I have to do this every other month, or almost every month, because I just get so much Lego in my apartment over on the East Coast and have to bring them all the way back to the West Coast. So, this is pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed this video, and maybe you got some tips on how to pack your own Lego as well. And hopefully you can learn from some of my mistakes. Thanks all for tuning into Duck Breaks. I'll see you again later, and bye-bye for now.